Welcome back to part two in our three-part series on bureaucracy. This lecture is entitled Bureaucracy and the Principal Agent Problem. We call bureaucratic organizations in the government agencies because they are our agents, or at least they're the agents of the president, Congress, and even the courts. So they're the agents of our agents. For example, when a judge issues a warrant, well, a police officer has to execute that warrant, and when the president authorizes a troop deployment overseas, the armed forces must find a way to execute that order. And when Congress passes a new environmental protection bill, well, the EPA must find a way to implement that new law. But like all situations where you have a principal contracted to do an agent's bidding, you run into the principal agent problem. Let me give you a quick reminder. A principal agent problem is a situation that occurs when one party, an agent, acts on behalf of another, a principal. And the problem arises mainly as a consequence of two factors. The problem of asymmetric information, which is that the agent typically has a lot more expertise and information about the costs and benefits of the good provided than the principal. And of course, the divergent interests of the principal and the agent. Uh, each has a life to live, and each has plans and dreams and aspirations of their own, and so they don't always have the same interest at hand. In particular, the agent would like to extract more money from the principal, and the principal would like to spend less money on the agent. Now, these two factors together can lead to inflated costs, where the agent uh, overstates uh, the cost of fixing uh, a problem or of carrying out the principal's wishes. And uh, it can even lead to invented or exaggerated problems where the agent outright invents problems for him or herself to solve or uh, exaggerates existing problems uh, in order to extract more revenue from the principal. Now, the principal agent problem in bureaucracy is often worse than the one that occurs uh, routinely in the private sector. If you don't like your car mechanic, after all, you can fire him. But if you don't like the behavior of a local FBI agent, what are you going to do? Are you going to send a strongly worded letter to your congressman? Uh, are you going to send a find uh, his or her superior in the field? And why are they going to listen to you? Right, So there's a very direct relationship between uh, your ability to discipline uh, someone that you're interacting with in a market. You just don't trade with them anymore, and they lose your business. But when it comes to government uh, and bureaucrats, uh, they don't lose your share of tax revenue when they uh, don't serve you well. And so as a result, the uh, accountability is, or the chain of accountability, isn't quite as strong. But actually, it's a little bit worse than that. In a market, after all, it's usually fairly easy to know if you paid too much or you got a good deal. The prices are determined by the market, and the prices are public information. In fact, businesses can't wait to tell you what their prices are because they are trying to lure you uh, to, to their business. Moreover, the quality of the service provided is usually relatively easy to measure. Um, in effect, because businesses compete, you can be relatively confident that the price quality ratio of the good or service that you are buying is almost as good as it can be. I mean, if it could be better, someone would make money by making it better. This is what we call innovation. And of course, markets are pretty good at innovating because there's a lot of money in innovation. If you can successfully innovate, then you can capture a larger market share which presumably makes customers happy and makes them gravitate towards buying your products and services. This is all to the good. But in a bureaucracy, it's not always easy to know what counts as a good deal. How does the public measure the quality of an environmental inspector, for example? Or how does the public decide that the environmental inspector is overpaid or underpaid? How would it know? How does the public decide that a system of private environmental certification would be better or worse than a system where the EPA employs its own inspectors in-house? Because no one is really sure as to what counts as a good deal, bureaucratics don't necessarily always have a great incentive to work harder for constituents. And so in bureaucracies, typically, you don't get a lot of innovation. And one example 
uh, and this is an example that's often mentioned, is the contrast between uh, education at the high school level in the United States and education at the college level of the United States. Now, uh, first, it's worth noting that the United States has pretty average high schools for a rich country, uh, and the United States has one of the top systems of higher education, right? The Harvards and Yales and Stanfords in the U.S. are schools that everybody in the world wants to go to, whereas our local public schools are not the schools that everybody in the world is trying to get into. Uh, what is the difference between the higher education market and uh, the uh, high school education? Well, the difference is that one of them is a market. <laughs> uh, schools have to, at some level, compete for students, and as a result, they have to offer very attractive mixes of uh, services and education for their students or else they'll see their students go to other schools. And uh, that provides a tremendous incentive for uh, even nonprofits, that is to say nonprofit universities, to uh, compete and therefore to uh, provide higher quality services. Many universities in Europe and other parts of the world are public universities and so uh, when they compete uh, they're competing with perhaps American universities for that elite group of students that uh, can move between countries but other than that uh, they don't face a whole lot of competition particularly for domestic students. But <laughs> it's not just the quality of the good that's hard to ascertain. It's not just a problem of innovation, but it's also even when the quality of the work relative to its cost can be ascertained, they may well be problems disciplining bureaucratic agents, right? We said that it might be difficult to get your local FBI agent fired, and that might be true even if it were fairly easy to contact his or her boss. Sometimes, job security is part of the compensation package. Uh, this can come in the form of public sector unions, which protect the jobs of their members. Sometimes it's just part of an individual contract. The uh, United States government likes to save money, and one of the ways it can save money is uh, by offering job security uh, in exchange for lower salaries. It, it can attract a relatively higher level of talent by not by offering it more money than the private sector can offer them, but by offering them tenure and long-term job security. Now, um, it can do this uh, in part because it can rely on a much more stable source of revenue, that is to say taxes. Uh, a business can't force you to buy its products, but the United States government can certainly force you to pay your taxes, and so as a result, it knows that its revenue stream is going to be relatively guaranteed in the long run, and so it can, in fact, offer these types of contracts to bureaucrats, whereas a private firm can't necessarily promise to employ you for a long period of time uh, because it does not know uh, what its business is going to look like two, five, ten years down the road. So, we said that job security is sometimes part of the compensation package. It's also the case that sometimes firing or demoting a bureaucrat means upsetting a powerful politician. Some bureaucrats are appointed because of their political connections, not because they have uh, strong expertise in the fields uh, in question. Uh, so, for instance, um, I remember that uh, Richard Nixon uh, appointed a secretary of state who was a lawyer who wasn't particularly an expert on foreign affairs, um, but he was a loyal supporter and he already had uh, Henry Kissinger as his national, his national security advisor, but for political reasons he couldn't appoint Kissinger as Secretary of State. So, you know, the top, um, the top official in the State Department turned out not to be an expert, but a political appointee. Another reason why it's difficult to discipline bureaucrats sometimes is that bureaucracies will rally around their own. This is particularly true when public sector workers are unionized, but not only. Um, and this is true especially if they feel that their principals don't understand the value of their work. Uh, complaints will often be routinely ignored because it's perceived that those complaints arise from misinformation. The public or the overseers don't understand uh, either the nature of the service being provided or 
what it is exactly that they're doing, and so as a result, they close ranks around even bad apples among them uh, because they assume that criticism is simply born out of ignorance rather than being justified. And um, that can make it very, very difficult uh, to uh, have any kind of, of meaningful reform. Now, the principal agent dilemma in a bureaucracy inside the federal government makes three problems faced by all principals when dealing with agents worse. These three problems are the cost of measuring agents' performance, we call these measurement costs, the cost of monitoring agents, um, that is to say figuring out whether they're breaking the rules, these are monitoring costs, and the cost of disciplining agents, and this, these are called enforcement costs, right? So in each case, the cost seems to be higher in the public sector than it would be in the private sector. This means that the overall cost of providing goods through the bureaucracy is necessarily going to be higher. This is why we don't want the government ultimately nationalizing food production um, and having the Department of Agriculture produce all of our food. Uh, our suspicion would be that it would be more expensive food if we were to organize production that way. And one of the reasons why it would be more expensive is because of higher measurement costs, higher monitoring costs, and higher enforcement costs. Okay, uh, join me next time for a lecture on strategic responses to the principal agent problem in the bureaucracy.